Did you name yourself Paradise Gray because you knew what would happen to your beard one day? I was born with gray hair. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, I had patches damn. of gray hair in my oh. hair since I was a child. What's up? My name is Cypher Sound. What are you doing? Just chilling? I'm a hip hop DJ, radio personality, comedian. Even hotter, I'm the host of Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems, where I'll take you, the fans, behind the scenes, cut right there, beep, to find out what challenges we face as we travel the country. Oh my God. In search of hip hop's most iconic relics. Winner is. To bring them home to the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. I'm Cypher Sounds, and I'm a field collector for the Universal Hip Hop Museum. I'm here with my guy, Paradise Gray, chief curator of the Universal Hip Hop Museum in the Bronx. Yeah, Sugar Hill Gang to me is just represents the start and the spark of what became the hip hop music industry. You know what I'm saying? The, the records that they made, rappers the like, the first record to really kind of blow up and become a commercial success led to how I now have a career. You know, Sugar Hill Gang was the, the only rap song on the radio. You know, every other right. rap song that they were playing after that, they would play the instrumental without even playing the lyrics. So, wow. the, you know, and for that song to be like 15 minutes long, they would play that whole song. The whole thing. So you, you'd have like a quarter of an hour right. dedicated to one, one song. song. Yeah, that's crazy. It was the beginning of hip hop to the world. Right. It's like hidden secret culture. And then yeah. when Rapper's Delight came out, then you can actually go buy a piece of vinyl put it on your turntable and play it, and it actually spread as like a real item. You know, the Sugar Hill Gang was just so many firsts. The first hip hop mogul, yeah. Sylvia Robinson. Right. The first platinum single, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't talk about Sugar Hill Gang without talking about Sylvia Robinson. She created the Sugar Hill Gang, she created Sugar Hill Records, Ridiculous. I mean, you know, Sylvia didn't just have Sugar Hill records. She had about five or six other labels right, also. Before, like before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She just was just a symbol of excellence in the music industry. Yeah. Hey, brother, how you doing? What's up, man? My name is Leland Robinson, president of Sugar Hill Records, and son of Sylvia Robinson. What? How are you here right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is ah, what up, man? man? I am Master G one of the founding members of the legendary Sugar Hill Gang. So it's crazy that you're actually in yeah. the studio. Yeah, yeah, man, we, man. we in the mix, yeah. man. We, you're recording? Yeah, I mean, it worked. Leland and I, we're working on a project. We're working on something real hot. That was a great day going to see Leland because not only do I get there and Master G from the Sugar Hill Gang is in the studio there, they actually had the thing I was hoping to find. This is like Pulp Fiction, which is a first pressing of Sugar Hill Gang Rapper's Delight, because it didn't even have the label on it. Mm -hmm. It was just a white label where you'd have to write Sugar Hill Gang Rapper's Delight on it. Oh my God. A test pressing is after you make the record, they press it into vinyl. And a lot of times they'll give that to the DJ to play it in the club to get a vibe or play it on a stereo just to see if it sounds right. And to make it even crazier, Master G noticed that on that particular vinyl, it was his handwriting that wrote Sugar Hill Gang Rappers Delight because all the different uh, members of Sugar Hill Gang had to like take all the white label vinyls and write on them. And that would happen to be his handwriting. So he was blown away. It was, whew, that was a moment. Coming up on Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems, I got some crazy stuff about Naughty by Nature's Treasures. Naughty by Nature to me is one of the best groups in hip hop. And they, they made several worldwide hits. Like when Eminem says Tretch is one of his favorite rappers, you know this guy has skills. It seemed like Tretch and Vinny, they just had a knack for making these songs that were just bigger than the club. You right. know what I mean? Right. Oh man, when I think of Naughty by Nature, I think of hip hop anthems. I was down with OPP, yeah, you know me. They, had old ladies and little kids saying it and didn't even know what it meant. Naughty definitely took it yeah. to another level. Yo, we went from nobody knowing us to getting chased out the mall like the Beatles. He's a throwback. 
to Marvin Gaye singing Let's Get It On. You know, how clever R&B artists yes. used to be in disguising yeah. our raunchiness. Exactly, yeah, that's <laughs> Like how it, Grace yeah, Jones, sure. pull up to my bumper, baby, in your long black limousine. <laughs> Wonder what she was saying. Ah, man, I thought it was just a location scout. Sure. After I came out as Naughty by Nature, I started saving a lot of things. As I said, I'm gonna start leaving stuff at different relatives' house, like valuable stuff that I love. Face Finster, that's one of my best friends. Look at that. Okay. That's, that's so, you see the wear and tear. You still had to have that label so you know it's official. You ain't just right. make a plaque to yourself. This the wow. original OPP first single one. Man, I'm so happy Tretch is a collector because he kept a lot of pieces. And Yo-Yo told me that he even had more stuff that they didn't even get to. We just didn't find that machete. Man, I wanted the machete. I think he called it Alibaba. And he used to walk around with that machete like, yo, anybody want it, you got to get right up on me and you're going to get this. And the bulletproof vest too, like, really? He's right. They killed Tupac. They killed Biggie, both by getting shot. So he wore that vest for real. 91, 93, 91, 95, it's 90 all our albums, it's like one of a, one of a kind. It was only three made. Me and K might have only two left. Then might have gave his away. It's a badge of honor. To anybody else, this leather jacket might just be just a leather jacket. But for me, it's like, it's stripes. It's like, it's accolades. It's like winning the medal at the Olympics. Letterman jackets have been around the hip hop culture forever. Whether you were an athlete in school and it was your actual football jacket or whatever, mm -hmm. or if we used to take the blank Letterman jackets and put the name of our crew on the back. So Naughty by Nature doing that on such a high level is really, really uh, um, their, their love and devotion to the hip hop culture. That's as hip hop as it gets. Da, da, da. Trigger. Grammy goes to. Listen, what I am holding in my hand is the very first, very first Grammy for the rap album of the year. Was no category before that. And then it wasn't televised. Nah, nah, we couldn't. We ain't had that much prize. We got this backstage on the press line. But I would love mm -hmm. to take that back to the museum. I mean, we go back over thirty. You gonna years. do it right? But I'll, I'll lend it to my family. Only you. Only you. Only you could get that. Man, it's a big deal to get a Grammy, especially from Naughty by Nature. Just think about it. Hip hop wasn't getting a lot of Grammys back then. And that Grammy in particular is the first time hip hop had its own category. Right. Before that, we would win Song of the Year. Right, right, or right. Or things like that. But this was the first Grammy that had the word hip hop actually attached exactly. to it. And just as a show of disrespect of how the industry treated us, Tretch and Vinny didn't even get to receive their Grammy on air. Oh, they were given a Grammy was... backstage. Yeah, backstage, yeah. You know, it wasn't even good enough, you know, to, yeah. to, to, to take away uh, the three minutes of TV time that right. it would have took. Yeah, they, they, the Grammys were scared of hip hop back then. The culture was too new. They were like, nah, nah, you gotta do this for exposure. Yeah, we've been overexposed and underpaid since. But yeah. now it's good to see young people take the business part of show business serious. Right. Hip hop has grown up, you know what I'm saying? Fire. Thanks for watching Hip Hop Treasures Bonus Gems. I'm gonna catch y'all next time.